and see what God, be part of what God has in store for this great nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a church now by the grace of God. So it's made traveling very, not difficult, but every time you leave, you are conscious of back home. Mm -hmm. So it makes it, you know, when we were full evangelistic ministry, we packed our bags and we left. And we didn't know that. It didn't matter how long we were But now, time is limited. Mm -hmm. We go somewhere and we have to quickly get back. Mm -hmm. So I had to quickly get back. And one of the evangelists, Jonathan is going to Ghana, which is my country of birth. And he leaves to go on Thursday, which is going to be Friday, your time. But he's going to go there on Thursday. And I wanted to go with him because that's his first time going to that country. And that's where I'm from. Wow. So I had plans to just come be in Sydney, preach there and test things out and go back. But when I announced that I was about to go to Australia, you know, pastor had already messaged me and asked me to come to my church. And I saw the message. I'm going to be honest. I saw the message, but I never like read because I didn't want to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the message was said if you wanted to come, to uh, hey, I saw that you come to Australia. We would love for you to come to our church in Toowoomba. Even first of all, the name Toowoomba, Toowoomba sounds like a place I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who, who lives in Toowoomba? <laughs> I mean, very yes, and actually, I'm shocked. It's a beautiful town, yeah. especially after you drive from Sydney. All the way here, drive through the country. If you get to Toowoomba, you say, Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back into civilization. <laughs> so it was actually because I thought it was going to be one of those towns that we drove through, but I'm, I'm glad. Toowoomba is a big city, beautiful place. So, you know, so Pastor said, You know, I want to come up. I, I was going to respond to him. So I, I had about a few people come up to me and say, I saw that you're going to Australia. I even went to Malay the shit. I said, who is Malay? You know, so the first one, I said, no, I'm not going to Malay. <laughs> and then I had a second person said, are you going to Malay? So the name came twice. So then um, I was talking to another guy. The third person said, are you going to Malay? So then I went on Instagram and I typed in Malay. And I said, oh, who is the fine gentleman that messaged me? <laughs> so I said, you know what? And then the response says, everybody knows it. Maybe I should get to know it. <laughs> Since he's famous, you know. <laughs> uh, that's, that's miraculous. So I responded, you know, without question, I said, yes, I come. What are the dates? So he sent me the dates. And to be honest with you, it was it was a stretch. Because how I do want to go back. I'm not lying. I miss my family. I miss my wife and kids. And um, two almost three weeks is the longest, to be honest with you, the longest I've ever stayed in the, in any any country. I go to a place in the country of my birth, in Ghana. When I go there, finish my knees and leave. Less than two weeks I'm out of there. You know, so it's it was a stretch. But because, you know, the famous Pastor McLean. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it, 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 it's been interesting. I'm very, very glad that I decided to come. You know, you guys are happy people. And it is, I know that it's going to be a good meeting. Because the Bible says the happy are those whose God is the Lord. Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. I believe that God has plans for this meeting. And the truth of the matter is that yes, we have great meetings in Sydney. We have great meetings in Sydney. I'm not speaking anything negative about it. We saw people get healed, and people get sick, the transgender came to the altar and gave their life to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. But during the Sydney meeting, I started to believe that I actually came to Australia. Because of this meeting. Oh, yeah. I believe that I actually came to Australia. We've had challenges, but we've had a few challenges on our. <laughs> matter of fact, 
coming to Australia from America, you know, I'm, I know I'm African, but I've been living in America in long enough to become a, to be Americanized. And you know, I've kind of had some of the American men thinking we are the best in the whole world. We are the greatest people. <laughs> it's just an American mentality. Whether you like it or not, they will indoctrinate you and make you think. <laughs> <laughs> so I think holding the American passport, I have access to go anywhere. <laughs> so I got to Chicago and got to the ticketing, and they're like, you don't have a New Zealand visa, so you, we can't let you fly. I said, do, do I need to, do I need a visa to New Zealand? They said, yeah. I said, do you know that I have an American passport? <laughs> <laughs> they said, well, you have five minutes to the gate, to the, the counter close, so you better apply or else you take your American passport back home. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So I applied there, thank God I got the visa within a few seconds, and they let me in. But they printed only the New Zealand boarding pass and gave it to me. So when I go to New Zealand, now I go to the, the waiter for six hours, Leo, I went to the gate, and I told the guy at the gate, I said, hey, excuse me, sir, then I don't have a boarding pass to Australia. And he mentioned my name. And he said that when I got a pla pla the uh, flight list, your name was on no flight. And I was wondering what was wrong. So he looked it up and said, do you have an Australian visa? I said, I thought I don't need a visa to go to Australia. I have an American passport. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, everyone needs a visa to go to Australia except Australians. He <laughs> 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 said, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but he shouldn't give me access to heaven. <laughs> oh, no. So then the guy was like, well, we have to send you back to Chicago. Oh, no. Because your transit um, visa expires soon, because it's only a transit visa, you only get it for the duration that you are there, you're not allowed to stay overnight. And then, the Australian visa doesn't, that takes at least 24 hours before you can get it. I said, oh. you know, and the plane had already started boarding. I said, at least show me how I could apply. And the guy kept talking about how he's, you know, it's, it's not, even if I apply, there's no way I could get on that flight. He said, let me call downstairs. He called some people. I said, just give me the website. He gave me the website. We went on there. I couldn't find the way to get apply. And then at that time, you know, he was like, this is going to be a very expensive, you know, <laughs> you know mistake. So. Wow. I finally went to my app store, downloaded the Australian ETA, and I applied for the visa. Right when I hit send, I went to my mail, I checked my mail, and I received a, a, a message from them saying, granted. Wow. So I went to the counter, and I was like, I showed him. His eyes got big. He said, he, said, he said, this is the fastest I've ever seen an Australian visa come back. Okay. Wow. Then he said, uh, so he was waiting for them to send the confirmation to the system, and it wasn't coming. But before the flight was done boarding, he had received everything and I was going to fly in. That gave, me, that gave me the confidence that there is something that God has for this trip. Yeah. That I believe that it doesn't matter what you've been through or what you are going through, God can do something about your situation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I believe that tonight and this week, if you would make this week a time for God, you make time for God. And say that I'm going to press in and press in deeper than I've ever done, God will meet you. And every area of concern shall come under the power of the Almighty God. Amen. And you will testify that indeed God is good yeah. and His mercies endures forever. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you, if you will, open your Bibles with me to the famous Mark chapter 5. The Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 5. And I'm going to read from the verse number 25. Mark chapter 5. The verse 25. Let me tell you this. I'm not going to preach long. This mystery is not going to be long, but they're going to be powerful. They are going to be worth not missing. Because one thing that I know 
And we've been privileged to have the opportunity to travel to different places. We've been privileged to do mass crusade. We took in front of thousands of people to preach this same message to. One thing that I know, if I know something at all, or if I don't know anything at all, one thing that I know is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, yeah. is the same today, yeah. and is the same for real. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That same Jesus we preach in Africa is the same Jesus in Australia. Yeah, yeah. That same Jesus that we preach in America is the same Jesus in Australia. Amen. So what he did in Africa, he will do in Australia. Yeah. What he did, he does in America, he will do in Australia. Yeah. So I want you to set up your faith. And I'm going to preach a message. Do not doubt the power of your faith. You have to understand that that's the mistake that a lot of people make. When we talk about the gospel of faith, or we talk about the faith message, many Christians believe that faith is an ethereal thing. It is something that you have to work so hard to reach. It is something that is almost impossible to attain. But even if you could attain, only certain kinds of people can attain that. But the Bible said that Jesus said that it is given to each man a measure. Everyone has faith. Yeah. Whether you know of it or you don't know of it. Whether you are conscious of it or you are not conscious of it. Everyone has a measure of faith. Yeah. Amen. You have faith, I have faith. And if you would put your faith to work tonight. The Bible says that no things are impossible with men. But with God all things are possible. You would move into the realms of impossibility to the realms of possibility. Your testimonies and your long prayer points shall be answered by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. Oh, I just noticed you. <laughs> I was just watching you on TV recently. <laughs> they are very famous. So I'm just watching. I, was, I was just watching them on TV. That's all of you. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5, the verse number 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Every time I read this story, this is one of the most encouraging stories in the whole, to me, to me, one of the most encouraging stories in the whole Bible. Because the Bible talks about a certain woman. And you know why the Bible never gave the woman a name or never called out the woman a name? Because God wants you to put your name there. A certain man, a certain woman, a certain boy, a certain girl, a certain old man, a certain young woman. So you can put your name there and you shall become that certain man and that certain woman. That's good. The Bible says that a certain woman who had had an issue, let me tell you this, whether you're going to agree with me or you're not going to agree with me, every single one of us at the sound of our voice has some issue in our lives that we are dealing with. Yeah. We have some issues. Some people have issues with back pains. Some people have issues with arthritis. Some people have issues with deafness. Some people have issues with, with uh, low, not being able to see clearly. Some people have issues with their children. Some people have issues with their grandchildren. Some people have financial issues. There is issues all that we have. Yeah. But the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ enables us by faith to turn all our issues around. Amen. And, I, and in the name of Jesus, by the time this week, not even this week, that tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost, every issue of concern shall be turned around for your good in Jesus' name. The Bible says that a certain woman, you know, this woman's story really sticks out to me because I remember I was preaching somewhere, no, I was preaching online, and all of a sudden that word of knowledge came to me. And I said that there's a certain girl, just like in the Bible, I said that there's a certain woman listening to me right now, who has been bleeding for four and a half years. And as you are hearing me speak now, by the power of God, the blood dries up. 
And I don't remember when this was, but it was shortly after, a few, in 2021, in January, I was in Florida at Pastor Ronnie's church where my friends were just at. And we were, I was standing outside after the meeting with Pastor Ronnie around like 1 a.m. And then, whilst I was walking away, there was a group of young people from San Antonio standing there waiting to talk to me. And one of the young girls said that evangelist, I just waited to talk to you. She was a young girl, like probably in her early 20s or even teen, like late teens. But I believe that she was in her early 20s. She wouldn't be older than 25. And she said, you were ministering online. And you said that there is a, somebody watching who has been deep, who has been bleeding for four and a half years. And you said that immediately you said that the flow of blood stopped. And I've been healed by the power of God ever since. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you this. Amen. Preaching around the world and preaching to places, one thing that I've seen is that there are issues that people are dealing with that and they are even embarrassed to even ask the pastor for prayer. Yeah. People are going through so much that it is so bad that they can't even talk to anybody about it. Oh, people are going through so much that they've talked to so many people about it and they've not been able to help them. So because of that, they've given up. And they've come to the point, they've come to the conclusion that maybe this is the way God made me to live. Or maybe this is my Lord in life. The Bible says that this woman has been bleeding for four and a half years. And the way you refer to the Bible said, for she has spent all her livelihood on doctors. Trying to be better. Man, yeah, I could only imagine. Because when you talk about blood, you know, there was a fountain of blood thrown out of her, the Bible said. When you talk about blood, the Bible said that the life of everything is in its blood. That's right. So blood is your life. Yeah. Wow. And mm. when you have been losing blood, it is a portion of your life that has been draining out of your mm. body. And let me tell you this, I don't know scientifically the percentage of blood that is in the human body or the amount, the quantity of blood that is in the human body. But let me tell you this, if you've been losing blood for a certain period or have you ever seen somebody, whether in a car accident or bumped their head and have lost a certain amount of blood, then all mm. of a sudden they rush them and they need to put blood on, you know, give them a yeah. blood or infusion, whatever it is. Yeah. And then if they don't do that, there's, there's going to be some kind of diseases and sicknesses that develops even because of that, if he survives. Mm -hmm. But this woman has been having that issue for 12 years. Mm -hmm. You can only imagine what other things she has picked up along the line. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was anemic. Blood has a smell. Mm -hmm. So maybe she stunk. You know, during those days, they didn't have good doctors. And the Bible says that she spent all her money on doctors, not not to say that doctors are bad. No, that's not what I'm saying. But there is things in life that doctors are not able to help you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I found out in life that if God can help you, then you are a dead man. Yeah. Because one thing that God does is that when all men has given up on you, that is where God comes in because he said that for my glory, I will not share with him. Amen. That is why I'm confident that tonight God will do for you. And this you God will do for you what no doctors can do. God will do for you what no banks can do. God will do for you what no men can do. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. So, probably smelling, you know. And I can only imagine, probably her husband left her. Because she's weak. She's been bleeding continuously for 12 years. That, you know, she can't perform her wifely duties. As a husband, you know, we are growing, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So the husband probably left her. The house probably smells, and the children probably walked out on her. You know, she was weak. And then the book of Leviticus, the Bible says that when a woman is in, on her monthly cycles, she was considered unclean. And if she touches anybody apart from her husband, she could be take, taken to the outskirts of town and stoned to death. Mm -hmm. So this woman was living in isolation. Man, they try to shut down the country for two years and some of you were on the street rioting. Just imagine, she lived in isolation for 12 years. Yeah, yeah. She couldn't come in the midst of people. She was quarantined. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't come in the midst of people. You know, you talk about this, it sounds like you're talking about somebody. But there's people 
who even within them they are so lonely on the inside of them because of the issue it feels like they are in the world and there is people around them but they are alone because of trouble, because of hardship, because of certain things that they can't even communicate. Let me tell you, Pretty Crusade has actually made me open up my heart and giving me compassion for people. Yeah. Because when we go into the bush of Africa, I saw, I saw people. You know, you see women and their skin is so dry, their breast is like flat. You know, everything all because of lack of nutrition, no food, nothing. Because they, they are lit, their lifestyle is so harsh. Yeah. Yeah. You see people with cataracts on their eyes, yeah. all because of more nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you this. <coughs> it's not just in Africa, but all over the place. When a woman has, gives birth to a child that is sick, and because the child was sick, the husband just packed up and left the woman. And then all of a sudden, the woman is asking, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. What did I do wrong? When we were just preaching in Sydney, I walked over to a lady, a, South, a beautiful South African woman. Didn't know she was South African. But whilst I was ministering, I walked up to her and I said, woman, listen to me. I see the, the hand of God upon your life. But something happened in your life that you have been beating yourself about. I said that the devil hit you hard, pushed you to the ground, and reduced you to nothing. And made you, and now you blame yourself for what happened. And you've been carrying this burden for so long. And you think that everything that happened, happened because of you. And now you wonder if, even if God loves you or God knows who you are. This woman broke down and began to weep. Then I was just speaking, I didn't know. I was speaking by the word of the Lord. I didn't know what I was doing in my life. But this woman broke down and began to weep. After the service, I went upstairs and she asked one of the ushers if they could bring her to me. So they brought her to me. He says that listen, I didn't even want to come. Somebody invited me to this to this church, to this meetings. I didn't want to come. I've been giving excuses all week. But I woke up this morning and I knew that I had to be here. But even through that, I was giving excuses. But then I decided, you know, finally I'm gonna come. He said, you don't know what you just said to me. 14 years ago, my husband committed suicide. And for 14 years, I've been carrying this burden. I've been thinking that it was my fault that he died. And you know, I wonder, I cry at night. And when I go to bed, I cry at night. And I ask myself, even does God know who I am? Does God even care about my life? Yeah. You know, there is something that the devil does. The Bible says that he is a thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is what he does. He's excellent at that. And I said to the woman, do you know what happened to you? The devil killed your husband, and now the devil wants to use that issue to destroy your life. Yeah. You can tell she hasn't smiled for years. You can see from her face. She had an issue. She had an issue. I remember when Hawaii and one girl was dealing with her business, all of a sudden, her business partner, you know, had a, a million dollar business. They used to revenue about four million dollars a year. So she was, she was very well off, very, doing very well, had a business in Washington, D.C. And all of a sudden, her business partner turned against her and wants to take the business away from her. She had an issue. People have issues. People have issues. She had an issue. We pray for her, God help her to get out of that business, and now she's doing way better than she's ever done. The Bible talked about this woman, she had that issue. She was losing the very essence of her life. Her blood, she was bleeding on her blood. She was weak, possibly have lost her marriage, possibly has lost her children, possibly has become the laughing stock of the community. Everybody points fingers at her. Everybody tells her, man, you said you believe in God. What has your God done for you? You believe in Jesus. What has Jesus done for you? People, you know, you have family members sometimes. You go to church seven days a week and it doesn't show anything in your life. You are praising God. Everything you say, you say, praise God, but you are sick. How come your God is not doing anything for you? How come your God hasn't helped you? How come your God can't do anything? I know a man actually I was on the phone with him before I came here. He was a very, very anointed and powerful. He is.
very anointed and powerful man of God. God used him in mighty miracles. I'm talking about, he tells me some of the testimonies. You know, before I go and preach, especially when I'm preaching crusades, I'll just call him. And he tells me some of the miracles and the testimonies from his crusade. And it just encourages me, and it's like, in Africa, we use this word, it genius me to go out there to speak. Yep. Yeah. And he, yeah. he told me one of the testimonies, he was preaching at a church, and they brought a girl to him, and the girl had, was born with no bones in the leg. He said that you could twist the legs, and you could tie the legs like a rope. And he held that baby, and the Lord said, that throw the baby up into the sky. And you know, at that moment, you are thinking, man, he threw the baby out to the sky. The baby has no legs to stand on. The baby falls down and hits the head. What are you going to do? But he knew that God, he knew the voice of the Lord. He knew what God told him. So he said that he threw the baby into the sky. And because of fear, he turned his back. <laughs> and he heard, boom! And then heard a, a shout, like a loud roar. He turned and the baby was running back and forth. Yeah. And, you know, that is the, between the skies and the ground, bones grew in the legs. That is the type of man of God this person is. Mighty miracles. He was getting ready. He bought the largest crusade equipment in all of Africa. Bigger equipment than Ryan Bonke. Talking about this man was insane. Powerful man of God. And in 2015, he got very sick. He almost died. And he hasn't been able to recover now. He's in a wheelchair. He is still... You know, he's doing much better now, this last year and this year, than he has been doing the previous years mm -hmm. with an issue. And you know, his kids saw how their father performed mighty miracles mm -hmm. in the name of the God he serves. Mm -hmm. And now his kids are seeing how their father is being afflicted by the devil. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. You know, I see that his kids' pictures and videos on Instagram and it breaks my heart. Completely rebelling against God because they think that God has forgotten about their family yeah. and they think mm. that God has left them dry. Mm. But man, the master keeps his faith. He prays, he prays, says home and pray, prays for me. I call him before I want I'm about to go and preach. He prays for me before I go and preach. But he has an issue with his family. He has an issue with his children. He spares the risk of losing his children to the devil. But I know God. I know the God that we serve, that he's never too late nor too early. That he is faithful. That God will intervene for the family in the name of Jesus. So when I talk about issues, this woman had an issue with the hell. But you can have issues with different things. Different things. Finances. Marital issues. And you know, there's a there is a young, there is a, a, man, a man's wife called me. You know, when you were pastor, you hear all kinds of things. Sometimes I said, I said to my wife, who, do the, who does the pastor talk to? <laughs> the pastor talks to God and everyone talks to him. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes people think that being a man of God, you are like a superhuman, which they all think that because you are a superhuman. Because you can handle people see you and handle your own issue. That is super. <laughs> you know, because if you have, let's say you are fighting with your wife, who are you going to go talk to? Not your congregation. <laughs> Let me tell you this joke. <laughs> you know, in a, uh, who has been to Assemblies of God church before? No. I used to go to, I went to Assemblies of God Bible school. So, it's in the churches, doing worship, people will start get up and, get, and speak in tongues. <laughs> La, 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 la. Thou says the Lord, holy am I, holy, 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 holy. You, you know, I've come to bless you, pour on my spirit, all those things. So there was a time one lady got up and, and got up and do worship. La, 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 spoke in tongues. Thou says the Lord, fear not, fear not. But if you are afraid, it is okay. For I am, for I am the Lord, sometimes I am afraid. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you have issues and you go to your pastor, or if your pastor, your pastor has issues, just imagine your pastor coming to your house and say, Brother, you better keep me in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> At that moment, you're going to say, You know what, we are all dying. <laughs> so, your pastor has to be strong for your sake. Yeah. Your pastor has to be continually strong for your sake. So, these people have issues, this woman had issues with her health. 
and she'll be losing blood for so long. Spent all that she had with doctors trying to be better. And the Bible said, and this is what stands out to me. The Bible said that she heard about Jesus. Let me tell you this. I bet you that was about the first time she was hearing about Jesus. Because Jesus, the man of Galilee, the whole of Israel knew about who he was. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed for the devil, for God was with him. Yes. Everybody heard about this man. Yeah. That the blind saw and they begin to see. The cripple saw him and they began to walk. Even the dead was being brought back to life. Mm. Yes. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the mighty miracle worker. Yeah. Yeah. But there is a difference between between hearing by your natural eyes and hearing by the eyes of faith or by the ears of faith. Wow. Yeah. You know, you've heard the gospel being preached to you. You've heard that Jesus is a healer. You've heard that and you believe that. But it's still very difficult to receive a healing. Why? Because you are hearing about Jesus with the natural ears. Man, let me tell you this. I, I, you know, I wasn't born in a Christian home, but since I was a child growing up, I was actually baptized at the age of five in a Presbyterian church. So I've been hearing about Jesus. I knew about. I knew who Jesus was. If you had asked me who, if I was a Christian or not, I would have told you that I was a Christian. But I remember when I was in New York. I was in New York going to college. There was a, a Baptist preacher who lived in our in our apartment, our apartment complex. And one day he invited us to church because we thought we were gangsters. You know, we used to walk with a lamp and uh, do all those things. <laughs> we thought we were, we were like street boys. We thought we were bad. But now when you grow up and you look back and you look at all those things, you see that, oh, I was actually immature. Yeah. You know, it's not, it has nothing to do with being gangster or being cool. You were just being, you were just very stupid. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that was the lifestyle that we lived. I would wear like a, uh, uh, what they call a durag, and then I will put a bandana on it and wear like a hat in it. <laughs> like, crazy, like what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then I would walk around like that and, you know, he invited us to church. And I remember I walked into the Baptist church and they were like, you can't put a hat, you can't bring the hat in, you have to take off your hat. I said, hat, no, I'm not taking off my hat. I'm going to, so I stood outside and waited for my friends to go into the service. Because you know what? I knew about Jesus, but I've heard about Jesus, but it was only with my natural ears. Until one day in 2011, when I heard about Jesus and it entered into a different kind of ear, mm. everything about my life begins to change. Wow. So this woman had heard about Jesus, but there was somebody that came to her that day. And began to tell her about Jesus, and she heard it differently than she's ever heard it. That's awesome. Wow. Let me tell you this: when we stand on our crusade grounds and we say that Jesus Christ is a healer, and He's going to heal you, I bet you everyone there, almost all the people that hear us preach about Jesus and receive a miracle and receive their healing, I bet you that was not their first time hearing about Jesus. That was not their first time being rece receiving prayers. But at some point, something different happened in their spirit. Mm. Their spirit ears were open, and Jesus came right in, and He began to do for them that which only Jesus can do. Tonight and this week, in the name of Jesus, yeah. Jesus shall come into your, your situation. He shall come in the midst of your issue, and He shall yes. do for you that which only you can do. Can you give me one more? Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today. So the lady, somebody went to him and went to her and began to tell her about Jesus. Listen to me. This is hmm. Jesus. This same Jesus we preach. This same Jesus that opened the eyes of the blind. This same Jesus that made the lame to walk. This same Jesus that made the deaf to hear. This same Jesus that even brings the dead back to life. This same Jesus, if you can get an audience with him, he shall bring an end to every issue. He comes in the midst of the issue, the issue shall come to an end. The Bible says that he's our very present help in times of trouble. So it doesn't matter how long your troubles are. It doesn't matter how long you have been dealing with that trouble. If you would allow Jesus to enter, all the troubles shall come to an end. And you shall live rejoicing. You shall be 
20 hours to come yeah. to spend Thanksgiving with us. So she came to the house to see me, and she's a nurse. She was like, no, you got to go to the hospital. You were in a rough shit. I have a cousin who is a nurse practitioner, which is like a little tier lower than doctors. You know, basically, they are doctors who get less pay. Because <laughs> 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 they do everything doctors do except surgery, yeah. and they get paid way less than doctors. I told her, you want to be a nurse for toilet, you just go to medical school. And just get more money. More money than better. <laughs> <laughs> so she came to the house and was like, you got to go to the hospital and the rough shit. But I remember pre few weeks back, because I just I was just a new Christian, I was a baby Christian. But I was with a certain guy that I used to work with who was a pastor. You know, and he would tell me testimonies about testimonies. He would tell me stories and encounters that he had had with God. The things that God has brought him through, the things that he has suffered, the things that he has endured. He told me these testimonies, and I remember he told me a story. He said that one time I woke up in bed, paralyzed from the waist down, and he left the Lord. He said that I couldn't do anything. I don't know what happened to me, so I just started praying in the Holy Ghost. I said, I prayed. He said, He prayed for two hours. And all of a sudden, he started getting feelings back in his legs, and then he was able to get up and go to work that day. He told me those stories. I heard about it. It didn't just enter into my natural ears. It entered into my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was confined in the bed, with shoulders of very couldn't breathe, high fever, thinking, at that moment, I'm trying to think of this. If I've done anything that would allow me to go and was send me to hell, and I'm repenting for my sins, the sins that I haven't done, and the sins that I've done, I'm repenting because I thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. I remember what I heard. So I said, no, I began to lay on the bed and I started contending. I started praying in the Holy Ghost. And just like he said, after he was done praying for about two hours, he was restored back to full health. I started praying in the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden the fever began to break. I'm telling you, I was so wet. I was sweating like, like I say, I was sweating like a pregnant fish. <laughs> I was sweating like a fish. <laughs> I was swearing like a fish. <laughs> My whole bed was soaked with water, with sweat. But thank be to God, the fever broke off from me. And my health was restored and I got up. And I went to the party. And when I got there, everyone that saw me thought I was thinking to be sick. Wow. Because of the drastic change, it was like sudden. Yeah. Sudden change. Yeah. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter how long your issue has been, God can turn it around yes, in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, and, I, and this week I'm going to tell you testimonies. Let me tell you this testimony. I was in Finland, and this lady, man, that precious Chinese lady, Asian woman. Let me not say Chinese because I don't know if she was Chinese, she was Asian. <laughs> <laughs> But this precious Asian woman, I was, I walked into the, the building, I grabbed the mic like how I grabbed the mic from Pastor and I began to, as I was about to preach, the Lord spoke to me. And sometimes it happens, doesn't always happen, but the Lord spoke to me and said that there is somebody here with a problem with their arms. Like whether they broke, you know, they broke their shoulder or something like that. I want to heal them. So I said there is somebody here with a problem with your arms. Come here, let me pray for you. A few people came and prayed for them. They texted themselves, they testified that they were healed. So I was going through asking people, you know, if they feel better. I go to this, you know, Asian lady. She said that she feels better. But I didn't know what was wrong with her. So the next day I came into the building. She was sitting on the other side, the side. And she saw me, you know, it's like when somebody wants to get your attention. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> So I called her to the front that she could barely speak the Finnish language and she could barely speak English. I called her to the front. I said, woman, tell me, what is the Lord doing? She says that my body poison all over my body gone. Poison all over my body gone. I was like, man, she fell into a bush of poison ivy. Oh. That's what I thought. No, that's not what it was. <laughs> <laughs> because she said that poison all over my body gone. I was like, man, she must have fell into a poison ivy and I, it was itching her so bad and God healed her. That was how cool. You know, you fell into poison ivy, the Lord is healing you, praise the Lord. <laughs> She went under the power, she couldn't get up. She tried to get up, she would fall. She tried to get up, she would fall. So she laid down for the whole service, laid 
by the altar. So I'll like walk around, walk around. <laughs> like, so I, you know, I walk around, I move around what what when I preach. Yeah. So walk away, jump away, skip away, all those things. Wash your hands down the floor. And then so, you know, I still didn't know what was wrong with that. To me, in my, I should have inquired more, but in my simpleton mind, I thought she fell into a bush of poison IV. Because she said poison all over my body, gone. Yeah. So left Finland, came to the United States about a month later or two months later. I couldn't sleep, so I was just, I got up to go to the living room to pray, and then I got this message, is buzzing, because they're time different. So they were awake, but we were asleep. Buzzing my phone, hey, hey, Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. People sending me clips, people sending me pictures. So I went and I looked at the video, she was speaking some language, but the lady that was recording was trying to translate it to me. She said that this woman had stage four stomach cancer. Oh, They've operated on her stomach They've taken away part of her intestines because of the cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's going to the point the doctor said that there is nothing we can do for you. Mm -hmm. So she was actually in hospice. And she heard about the meeting and said that I know that Jesus would heal me. Had the family check out of check her out of hospice and come to the meeting. So when she was saying that poison all over my body, what she was talking about the poison of cancer. Yeah. You know, so the Lord. Healed her in those means. I'm talking about if I, you know, usually I have the pictures, but I don't know, I don't want to go through my phone. But if I should show you that, I should have known. Because when I saw her, she was losing her, her hair, was very thin. But I'm not going to judge you. You know, maybe you just don't have good hair. Maybe you were not born with good hair like me. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like losing her hair and was from the chemo. But the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord that turns situations around. Mm -hmm. The Lord that the Lord that changes story. Yeah. The Lord that performs miracles. The God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. My very present help in times of trouble. The great physician intervened in the issue and made that issue a non-issue. And I tell you this, I think just about last year they sent another picture and she's looking much better, way better than she did. She's much more beautiful. Her hair is now full. Uh, you know, like God completely restored her. Hallelujah. You see, the doctor said that there was no hope. And I don't know if they call it hospice here, but in America, hospice is called hospice here. Good. So the same thing. So, God. Where man said there is, we have done all that we could and we've given up. There's nothing we can do. Let me tell you this when man said there is no hope for you, you should be glad. Thank you. Because God specializes in hopeless situations. Mm. He said that with my glory would I share with no man. When no one can do anything about it, God said, Now this is the time for me to move. Because then no one can take glory for what I'm about to do. And I tell you this what God is going to do in your life this week, no man can take credit for it. No man can take glory for it. For you will say that you did this in the doing of the Lord. And it is marvelous in our sight. The Bible said that God turned around their captivity. And they were like dead and dread. But their mouth was filled with laughter. Even the heathens saw. And said that indeed their God has thus this great thing. God does great things. God does great things. A woman spending all her life with this issue of blood until she heard. When she heard, she said, Ah, oh, praise God. I've heard about him before. I've heard other people talk about him before. My love said, I've seen him pass before. But I never heard about him like I'm hearing about him tonight. And if what I'm hearing is true, then I'm going to believe that something is going to change about my life. Yeah. You know, you understand when faith comes alive in you, faith doesn't say that about I've tried everything. Because she had every excuse to say, you know what, I've tried everything I, I know how to do. Yeah. Are you telling me that this man can heal me? You realize that I've been to the best doctors in, in, in Australia. Mm -hmm. I even flew to 
New Zealand for medical attention. I even went to the United States and they couldn't help me. And now you are telling me that a man that is walking on the streets, that the, the, the religious teachers uh, don't like him, but it seems like a crowd follows him. They call him the cause leader. You know, maybe he's even using witchcraft. Are you telling me that that man is able to turn my situation around? Are you telling me that that man can wipe away the years of my tears and the years of my struggle and the years of my pain that he can give me a new beginning? He can give me a new life. Are you telling me that that man of God is capable of helping the son? Is able to do what you are telling that he can? And the man found looked at him and said, Yes. And he said, That if what you are saying is true, because there's something on the inside of me that bears witness. If what you are saying is true, then I believe it. I'm going to stand by my faith. And I know that this week, that man is here. The Bible said that when two or more are gathered in his name, there also he is. I know that he is here. I know that Jesus is here. And the Bible said that what he does for one, he's not doing for all. If Jesus healed that woman in Finland, then I know he will heal you. If Jesus opened up the eyes of the blind, then I'm telling you that your condition is not too far from him. For though with men things may seem impossible, but with God all. Oh, Possible. I see the possibility of your issue being turned into a non issue. I see the possibility of every trouble in your life being turned around in the mighty name of Jesus. I came to declare to somebody at the sound of my voice that though you might be sitting in the dark, though it might be like you were in a dark tunnel, I came all the way from Pittsburgh to let you know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The Bible said that so many last night by God. Full of glory. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. She heard about the man of God. You know, the thing about faith is that faith, when you hear faith, it kind of hijacks what you say. It takes control by your mouth. Because faith is a witness. It's a knowing in your spirit. Yeah. You know. <laughs> David said about my God, I can walk you a truth. <laughs> it looks like it's impossible. <laughs> Looking at one man look, staring at a thousand, two thousand troops, and he looked at him and said, You have no idea for greater is he who lives in me than <laughs> they that have the world. Yeah. Let me tell you, faith would make a 60-year-old boy confront a giant, a veteran, a war champion. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that they look at Goliath and they said he's the champion of wars. Yeah. He was a warrior. Mm -hmm. Faith would disregard how tough the opponent is. Because faith does not boast in itself. Faith boasts in the one who is able to do all things, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, more than we can think or even imagine. Yeah. Faith does not boast in one's ability, for it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the living God. Yeah. Faith, David looked at all that, looked at how big the man was, because unbelief will let you focus. You know what they say? Don't speak to the mountain. How big the mountain is, but speak to the mountain. How big your God But you know, faith doesn't speak to the mountain about how they're big, but big their God is. Faith speaks to the mountain to be removed. Yeah. Faith doesn't have time to negotiate with the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Mountain, man, man, man. Hey, you know, Mr. Mountain, <laughs> you think you are big in here. <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> I said, God, who is bigger than this mountain, you don't know, my God is too big, my God makes you look small. He said, no, faith doesn't do that. <laughs> when David was confronted with Goliath, David said, Mr. Goliath, I see that you have six fingers and you are so tall. I see how big your sword is. Uh, and you have somebody going before you with a shield. Uh, but Mr. Goliath, though you are tall, and though you are bad, and though you are deadly, my God is taller. My God is bad. My God is deadly. My God has a sword bigger than your sword. My God has a shield bigger than your shield. My God can fight better than you fight. No! 
<laughs> That's not how faith works. <laughs> faith does not speak to the issue how big your God is. Once all the trained soldiers of Israel was talking about how big Goliath was. Wow. David was just looking at ways to get rewarded of dealing with that issue. <laughs> <laughs> what is <laughs> because faith looks at the issue where no is in from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's very good. Wow. That's it. So when the woman heard about Jesus, she already knew the end of her story. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. She knew that, you know what, I'm going to that meeting this week and I'm leaving with a miracle. I'm leaving shouting and rejoicing. Really? I don't care who else needs one, <laughs> but I know that I'm getting what I'm coming here yeah. for. I'm just looking for the opportunity and the way. Hey, come on. She said, you know, I told me if I could touch the hand of his stomach, I know that I will be whole. Faith. Faith entered into it. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10. The faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She heard. Mm. When she heard, she believed. When she believed, she was like, she set up herself. You know what? I'm not going to say that one day it will be all worth it. All I need is to have an encounter. And I know that encounter will produce my miracle. Yeah. That encounter will produce my miracle. David saw Goliath, how big, tall, bad that guy was and disregarded everything about Goliath. Yeah, yeah. Didn't care. Just looking, you know what? He has a very big sword, so that means <laughs> if I lift up that sword to cut off his head, the sword is big enough, so the force that will come down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to put that much pressure on him to get up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> you see, most belief would let you focus on the problems. Yeah. Man, have you heard there's a new disease in town? <laughs> <laughs> it's called COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I heard <laughs> when you get COVID, it's like the flu. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite like the flu. <laughs> because when you get COVID, we can tell the moment you get COVID, you become immune to the flu. But. <laughs> 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 no, that's, that's what it was. Because the moment COVID came, flu disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets flu in the morning. When was the last time you know someone that had a flu? If somebody has a flu, they have COVID. Flu has completely disappeared. So, you realize that you were living your life normal when there was a flu, and that you changed the way you live because of COVID. Which is basically flu, just living. You understand what I'm saying? And then you find out today that the same amount of the death rate of the, the people, the amount of people that were dying of COVID is still the same today. But now they're telling you that live your life normal. Yeah. Yeah. You know the same amount of people that have died of COVID are the same amount that died today. There is no difference. Yeah. But now they are telling you that what you can live your life. No, 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 don't be afraid anymore. So you see, that is what the devil does. The devil makes you focus on the problem. Yeah. Yeah, right. Because the more you focus on the issue, there is no way faith can be stirred up in your heart. That's right. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But if you focus on God, yeah. the author and the finisher of all things, yeah. then you know that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But my God can run through a truth. I've seen God do things. I've seen oh. God heal the sick. I've seen God change lives. I've seen God restore marriages. Let me tell you this story and I'm grateful. I'm not going to preach over today. Because I, I want you to come back. I realize that when you preach over, people tell you to come back. Yeah, yeah, okay. So far, I don't even have a good time. I was preaching in a church near where our church is. It's called Enbridge. 
And like I walk around, I walked around like this. And I walked to a, a lady that looked like she was like 84 years old. And I joke around a lot. And my wife had, we just had one baby. I believe it was our second child. Or, no, our second child. <laughs> <laughs> Before I tell you this, so let me tell you. When people ask me how I tap on my phone, people ask me, hey, how old is your child? That before we had our son. How old is your daughter? I said, wait. I pull up the app. And I look. And I, said, oh. <laughs> so I remember I went to the, the, my, the you know, when babies are born, the, the doctors have like vitamin C and other things for them. I went, my wife sent me to go pick up one of those pre prescriptions. And I was at the pharmacy line. They said, why are you picking up the next for? I said, the day, day of birth. I said, oh, hold on. I called my wife, hey, what is my daughter's name? <laughs> <laughs> so then I downloaded it up, so it makes it easier. Just go <laughs> that, that was just a good part of it. So, my wife wasn't there, so it was an opportunity for me to flirt with somebody. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked by this 84 year old woman. I said, Oh, precious lady. I'm not saying you're 84. <laughs> I said, Precious lady, you are very beautiful. If I wasn't married already, I would have married you. Start <laughs> <laughs> so with an 84 year old woman. Even service. <laughs> no, but it was a joke. So she was like, oh, don't say that. That's so nice of you. But the re I walked up to her. It was, I saw God touching her. So I grabbed her hands and I lifted her up. And I said, precious woman, what do you want God to do for you? She said, I was, when I was a teenager, I had shingles. And because of that, I lost hearing in one of my ears. And for so long, she's been dead for one year. And he said that I have arthritis all over my body. I said, the sign that God is going to heal you of the arthritis is going to open up your deaf ears right now. So I prayed for her. The deaf ears came open right in the service. Right. And what touched my heart was that about a month or two later, I opened my mail and there was a letter from this precious lady. And then she wrote on a yellow paper. I still have it in my car. Every time the devil wants to discourage me, I bring a lot of people and I read it. <laughs> she said, I, did, I want to say thank you. One of, I think there was one of her aides, nursing aides, brought her to the program. She said, that I want to say thank you for the kind words she said to me. She said that I, my husband for 40 years was very abusive. And he ran me down, spoke bad things. So for years, I've been, I've struggled with self-esteem and always thought that I wasn't good enough. But when you said those things, when I, I thought it was a joke, but it was God that was speaking through me. So she said that those were very nice and really encouraged me. And she said, my ears is still open and all the right is full of my body is gone. This is the God, this is the Jesus Christ who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is the God that we serve. That is who he is. The one that is able to make issues and not issue. Amen. Yeah. Where your struggles becomes the thing of the past. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you this. We don't preach any different gospel. This is what we preach everywhere we go. This same Jesus. You know, when I stand on the crusade grounds with seeing or looking at thousands of those Africans, all I say is that this same Jesus. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. Jesus Christ the same today. And Jesus Christ forever. The Jesus that healed the woman, for she'd been bleeding for four, for twelve years, and she heard and she said, "Only if I could touch his garment, I know. I know. I see the end of my problem. I see the end of my sickness. I see the end of my marital struggles. I see the end of my shame. I see the end of my reproach. I see the end of my curse, and that ends with Jesus Christ." Yeah. Amen. Let me tell you this, there could be an end for every issue. I'm telling you, if you, are, if you are dealing with pain in your body, it could come to an end to life. It could come to an end to life with Jesus. Though with many things may seem impossible, but with Christ, all things are possible. I was ministering in a small town called, um, in Pennsylvania called Cuckstown, PA. 
And after we left, we had medicine and we left. And a 70 year old woman wrote me on Facebook. I don't even know how she know how to use Facebook, but. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote me on Facebook and said, I want to say thank you. I remember in that service. I remember in that service, I walked up to that lady and not that you were 70. <laughs> I walked up to that lady, she was sitting in the front like how you are, said, very beautiful like you. Mm -hmm. You are much more beautiful, but. <laughs> I laid my hands on it and the power of shot through her body. That precious old 70 year old woman began to vibrate. Father, the shake, and started crying and laughing, crying and laughing, crying and laughing. And she wrote me. She said that I've been dealing with headaches since I'm in my 20s. Oh, wow. For about 50 years, she's been on pain medication. Foul devil! Yeah. Yeah. You know why I hate the devil so much? Put somebody to that, you know, 50 years dealing with pain medication. Have to take medication for the pains in your body for a day. How wicked. But that night, when the power of God touched her, and the issue of concern became a non issue, mm -hmm. writing me to say thank you. I can tell you, I'll tell you more testimonies as the weeks goes by. But that is the Jesus that we talk about. Yeah. We don't talk about a dead Jesus. For he who descended with power is, is the same one that ascended in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever the devil has done against your life comes to an end tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is saying this today. So the woman heard and faith came alive in her. Yeah. And she set up her heart. That, oh, if I could, I could touch the hem of his garment. Oh, let me, when that faith comes, in Africa, one guy wrote me on Facebook. I knew the guy one way, you know, but you know, we've grown, we've grown apart. I'm now doing ministry, he's doing business. He's very prospering in his business. God has blessed him, but we used to be friends when we were young, we're kids, but we're going to follow everybody doing their own life. And I've been going to Africa, Ghana, to do ministry, and I've never seen him. But one day he wrote me on Facebook, and he said, that, can I come see you? And I remember I was in a different city, like how I am. And I was supposed to go back to the city. I told him, hey, I'm going to come back to the city. And let me tell you, if you want an appointment with me and you don't talk to my wife, there's a high chance that I'm not going to make it. That's a fact. <laughs> because I usually forget my schedule. <laughs> so I told him, be at my house at this time, not knowing that I had a TV interview. So I got back into the town, and my, the guy that I was shopping with said, hey, we need to go to the, this television network for an interview. It was an hour-long interview. So this guy has been waiting in front of my house for two hours. <laughs> so whilst we were pulling in, he was about to leave. So he shot the car, and he turned around and he came. We sat in the living room, I said, um, Fred, what is wrong? He said that my wife has been dealing with headache for so long. We've been, they had money, they were prosperous. He's, he has money. You know, you know what I'm saying? He has money, doing very well in business. So it has nothing to do with paying for doctors. He could hire the best doctor in the country. His uncle is a pastor. So you have to understand. So he said, we've been to the hospital that prescribed the highest paid medications for her, and the pain still persists. He said that I've been to my to pastors to pray for her, but still the problem is there. But one thing that he said that stirred up faith and 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 uh, what do they call it? invigorate? You know, like sparked up faith in me and challenged me. I'm just trying to find the right word for it. But it stirred up something on the inside of me. Was that he said? But I know that if you pray for her, she will be fine. Mm. Because that is faith. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because he saw the end of his of the affliction. Yeah. Yeah. He said, it doesn't matter who has done it before. It doesn't matter who has spoken over her life. It doesn't matter who has prayed for her. It doesn't matter how many pastors, how many doctors. I know that this problem that we came in here with is not living with us in the name of Jesus. So, the woman, when she heard, she set up her faith. And I tell you this as I was sitting down, but I'm looking at this guy that I grew up with, who is very prosperous. You know, he's driving like Range Rovers and all kinds of nice cars in Africa. 
And he's never shown me the same to my ministry. <laughs> he's never come to my meetings and all of a sudden you want me to pray for your wife? I'm like, I told one of my, the guys that I, my, I, used to, I talked with some people, I just didn't bring it in here. I told him to pray for the wife. So as he was praying, I was just thinking about the words he was saying. As I was thinking about it, I was being angered in my spirit about what the devil. So I got up and put my hands, you foul spirit, crossing this head. Come on, bro. She fell out of the car. She woke up and that was the end of the head. See, you might think that it was, oh, I am so anointed, it was my prayer. No, it was the faith of the husband that made the woman. Yeah. 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 Because her faith wasn't in my boy. Her faith was that if the evangelist lays hands on my wife, this problem will come to an end. Yeah. Yeah. When the woman heard about Jesus, she set up her faith. That you know what? The, if I could touch, why didn't she say that if I could touch his hands, if he could shake my hands, if he could lay hands on me, if he could pray for me, he didn't say that. He said that if I could touch the hem of his garment. You know why? Because she knew that there was no way. She didn't know someone that knew the, the man of God. She didn't have any connections to get to Jesus. But she knew that if I could sneak in and touch something that belongs to him. Because she knew that even if she was found in the midst of the people, she could be stone dead. So she said, only if I could touch the hem of his garment. She saw an end to her story. Faith would let you know where the end of the problem is. Faith will tell you that the problem is the day that your problem comes to an end. It doesn't matter how long you have been dealing with it. I see there is an end of that affliction. There is an end of that issue. There is an end of that trouble. And that trouble ends tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I always tell people that faith is very simple. It's very simple. Because whether you think you have faith or you think you don't have faith, you do have faith. The Bible says that it's been given to each man a measure. There is a measure of faith. Let me tell you this. You have faith to receive the answers you've been looking for. Let me tell you, you have enough faith to commit the hand of God to intervene in your issue. Let me tell you, you have enough faith to turn that issue around. You have enough faith to receive your healing, to receive your miracle. You have enough faith to receive a restoration in your marriage. You have enough faith to leave this room tonight, leaping and shouting and saying, that, look what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have enough faith for it. You have more than enough faith. You know how I know that you have faith? One, the Bible says it's given to each man a measure of faith. And two, faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And hearing by the word of God. I've been preaching the word of God to you for about 45 minutes. So even if you came here with no faith, now there's faith that has been ingested to you. And the Bible says that when your faith is as small as a mustard seed, That's it. it has the ability to produce much. Yeah. So you don't wait for you to have a big faith. You act on the small faith you have to produce a big testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's good. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is possible. It is possible for you to turn that issue around. It is possible for you to receive that miracle. It is possible for you to receive that breakthrough. It is possible for you to see the glory of God revealed in your life. Yeah. It is possible for you to come out of the grapes of hell yeah. and for you to break the claws of the enemy over your life yeah. it is possible yeah. it is possible for you to say that look what the Lord has done look what the Lord has done yeah, look what the Lord has done yeah. it is possible for you to say that only God can do this yeah. Amen. only God can do this look my life is a testimony of faith I'm just an African boy yeah. grew up in a village in Africa, but I dare to believe God. Yeah. I believe God. And we've seen God do my things. In one of our crusades, a child born deaf and mute for 23 years. Deaf and mute. Wicked devil. Mm -hmm. And the child begins to speak and begin to hear for the first time. 
glory be to God. Yeah. Amen. With men, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So tonight I came all the way here to tell you that you know that it's possible. Yeah. It is possible. It is possible. Yeah. I don't know what your issue is, but I know everybody has issues. Mm-hmm. It's possible. I have an issue. My issue is that I hate the devil. <laughs> How about you show the devil? So I came to drive the devil out of your life. Amen. I came to drive the devil out of this this city. Yeah. Yeah. The devil better go live in one of those country places and hide. Hallelujah. Because yeah. Tumumba does not belong to Satan, Tumumba belongs yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So if you want me to pray for you, lay hands on you, whether for healing, whether for whatever the issue is, I want you to line up in the front. Or oh, just line up wherever you can line up. And big bands, can you put your best finger in the corner for me? Please.